what we're going to be looking at here is common stock that's reacquired here as treasury stock and then it's going to be reissued here and its effect here that it would have on shareholders equity and look at how we calculate any gains or losses here or account for any gains or losses when we reissue this treasury stock. Now what we have to look at here is this treasury stock is going to be based here on the cost method and the other thing that we have to note here that treasury stock here that's reacquired is not an asset it's a contra equity account. So let's go look at what we're talking about here. We're going to have this treasury stock here and it's going to be on our balance sheet here and what we mean by a contra equity is this here. So uh, moving over to our common stock account here now that's our equity account here and what what we have here we're going to have a, a million dollars sitting here in our common stock account here. That would be credited here for a million dollars. That includes the additional paid in capital to our common stock. I'm just lumping it all together here as a million dollars. But what we're going to do here, we're going to go out and the company is going to buy back some of this common stock here. And, and what they do is they have to account for it here in a separate account here as a treasury stock account. And this is going to be a contra equity account. And what we're looking at here and what we mean by a contra equity account is this here. So say for example here the company goes out and they're going to acquire here, uh, buy back this common stock, 10,000 shares here, and they're going to pay $11 per share here uh, to buy back this common stock. And then they're going to, it's going to be accounted for here as treasury stock. So 10,000 shares times $11 per share, it's going to cost the company here $110,000 to buy that treasury stock or that common stock back. Now, one thing we have to point out here, the number of shares of stock is not changing. We're going to still have the number of shares, but it, it depends where it's sitting here. So uh, first looking at this common stock here. Uh, this is what we talk about by this uh, contra equity here is this is going to reduce the equity here. So we're going to have common stock that's acquired here as treasury stock. So we had this we have this million dollars worth of common stock outstanding here and now we're going to reacquire a hundred and ten thousand dollars here as treasury stock. So just looking at the difference here taking a uh, this what we mean by this contra equity here this treasury stock now represents a hundred and ten thousand dollars of the common stock here so originally we had our credit here we increase our equity was increased by a million dollars here uh, of common stock that they're holding but now uh, buying back a hundred and ten thousand dollars and putting it into the treasury stock account here we're going to now only have equity here of the difference here of eight hundred ninety thousand dollars so we reduced our equity here uh, and on our balance sheet here by 110,000. So we're sitting up here with $890,000 worth of equity here in our common stock. That's after we bought back these $110,000 worth of common stock and we're going to put it into the treasury stock account. So how we do that here is we would debit or increase our uh, treasury stock account here by $110,000. So you can see here you're, uh, you're debiting uh, your treasury stock account and that actually is decreasing your equity. And you can see well, how it's decreasing your equity here. You decreased your equity by $110,000 here. So when you debit your treasury stock here, you're decreasing your equity. So this is really what we're going to be looking at here, how this treasury stock interrelates here with the equity here that the company has. And um, Again, the treasury stock here is a repurchased common stock. So what we would do in, uh, for this $110,000 that we bought back here, we debit our treasury stock account here for $110,000. And then our, our cash account here, we would have had to pay $110,000 here to repurchase that uh, stock here. So we credit or reduce our cash account here for $110,000. Okay, so now we're sitting here where we have this treasury stock. It's a contra equity here. It's not an asset on our balance sheet here, but it's a contra for equity and now we're going to go out and we're going to reissue uh, this treasury stock and we're going to do it in this fashion here so we look at it we're going to have reissue a thousand shares here in three different three different dates here so we're going to have a thousand shares here and, and this is going to be the reissue price first thousand shares is going to be reissued here at fifteen dollars per share and the next a uh, thousand shares at eight dollars per share that's what we're going to receive from uh, by reissuing that's what we're going to receive here for reselling that um, treasury stock here now and then the third issue here is going to be again for eight dollars per share and we want to look at how we're going to handle this uh, uh, how we when we reissue this treasury stock how it affects our equity account here and how we uh, handle any gains or losses here on reissuing the treasury stock because remember it's not an asset here and um, 
by reissuing it here, we're going to have some gains or losses here, or we could have some gains or losses. It's not an asset on a balance sheet here. It's a contra equity account. And because it's not an asset here, we're not going to recognize any gains or losses on the income statement. Everything uh, uh, is takes is accounted for here uh, in our equity accounts here on our balance sheet, except again for our cash payments or cash receipts here. So let's look at the case here for this first uh, date here, a 3-1, when we're going to reissue 1,000 shares here. So we uh, at $15 per share here, we would debit our cash account. We're going to receive $15,000 for those shares that we reissued here. Then moving over to our treasury stock account here. Now on 3-1 here, you can see what's happening. This is where we're going to have to credit or reduce our treasury stock account by $11,000. Well, the reason we reduced it here by $11,000 is because we purchased it here at $11, and that's the amount that we're going to be using here in this treasury stock account here for our basis. So uh, purchase at $11 a share here. So what we have to do is we're going to, when we reissue those 1,000 shares, we're just going to take 1,000 shares times $11 per share. We're going to credit or reduce our treasury stock account. Now you can see by credit crediting or reducing our treasury stock account, we're actually increasing our equity. Because remember here, the original amount here, we decreased our equity by $110,000 here. But now we're going to reissue uh, $15,000 worth here. Uh, and we're gonna, that's going to increase our equity here by $11,000. So just remember here, when your treasury stock here, when you're crediting or reducing your treasury stock account, you're going to actually be increasing your equity here, opposed to where you debited or increased your treasury stock here, you would de um, you would decrease your equity here. So here we're sitting here. We had 15,000 cash receipts here. And in our treasury stock account, we recorded it here at $11,000. That was based on that $11 cost here. So now we have to account for the difference here. So that's going to flow into our additional paid in capital here for our treasury stock here. And what we want to really look at here is uh, just remember here, our debits here are going to be a loss uh, is going to be recognized as a loss here on any of those transactions here and a credit here into the additional paid in capital is going to be a gain here. So again looking at this 3-1 date here that we were looking at so we needed a balancing entry here between the $15,000 received and the 11000 that we put into our treasury stock account here so the difference here gives us a credit or of a $4,000 here, a reduction to our day no paid in capital here by $4,000. And you can see that this is going to increase our equity here by um, $4,000 here, increase our equity here in the, the company's equity here. So really what we're looking at here is um, when we credit our additional paid in capital here, that's going to be a gain here. This is going to be a gain because, and this is the fact here, we received 15000 and our cost that uh, basis here was at a, that $11 per share that we used here of $11,000. So our 15000 is greater than the $11,000 cost. So the difference here goes to a, day, a gain here, 15000 cost minus $11,000, or $15,000 receipt here, less the $11,000 cost gives us that $4,000 gain. So what we would do, we would credit our um, additional paid in capital here by $4,000. So again, just remember that, that increases our equity here, our equity account here. So then just looking up here uh, again here. So if we, if we, uh, if it's above the cost here, when we uh, reissue it here and it's above the cost, we're going to have a gain here. Uh, that's where we credit or reduce our additional paid in capital account. And if it's uh, sold below cost here, there's going to be a loss here. And we'll look at that. And that's where we debit or reduce our or increase our additional paid in capital here. And that's going to be a loss. So uh, just remember here, what, the, uh, what we call by contra equities here is just exactly what we're seeing here uh, when we talk contra equity for a treasury stock and also our additional paid in capital here as treasury stock. So you can see an increase here in our additional paid in capital decreases our equity here and a decrease in our additional paid in capital or credit here increases our equity. So that's what we mean by a contra equity account. And you can see it um, simply by our, our looking here, our cash receipts here versus the cost here uh, for our gain. 
and also we're going to look at a loss. So now let's look at our loss here. So now for the next period here, we're going to reissue 1,000 uh, shares again, but it's going to be at $8 per share. That was $8. So we got debit or increase our cash here for $8,000. Now moving over to our treasury stock account, we still stick with that $11 cost. So we had 11,000 share or 10,000 or 1,000 shares that we reissued here uh, times the $11 cost. So again, we're going to credit or reduce our treasury stock here by $11,000 here. Again, that increases our equity here. So what we need is that balancing entry here between the $8,000 debit and our credit here of $11,000. So here's where we go down. Again, we flows into additional paid in capital for our treasury stock here. So the difference here is it's going to, debit amount is going to go to additional paid in capital here of $3,000. So we have the $8,000 here debit, $3,000 on additional paid in capital is a debit. That balance with the $11,000 credit here in our treasury stock. Again, in this case, the $3,000 debit here to additional paid in capital is going to decrease the equity here. So just remember that here. Uh, here is where we're going to, it's going to, we're going to receive a, a price here below the cost. This is going to be a loss here. So again, a loss here, an increase in our additional paid in capital, that's going to be a loss here. That's going to decrease our equity here. Uh, for th by $3,000. And you can see that here, uh, a loss, you debit here to your additional paid in capital because in this case, we would have received 8,000. Our cost was 11,000. Uh, receipts here are less th uh, of 8,000 are less than our cost of 11,000. So the difference here, 8,000 minus 11,000 is going to give that $3,000 loss. So debit our additional paid in capital here for $3,000. Just Keep in mind here where you see your decrease in equity and your increase in equity and your debits and your credits here. Now let's go look at our final entry here. Uh, we're going to reissue here the remaining uh, uh, thousand, a thousand shares here at, again, $8 per share here. So we debit or increase our cash account here for $8,000. Now this is on this 5-1 date here. So now moving over a treasury stock account, again, you just stick with that cost amount here that you have here of $11 per share here, a thousand shares, that's going to be credit or reduce our treasury stock here for $11,000. So again, now is where we need that balancing entry here. We got a debit here uh, of a uh, 8,000 a credit in our in our cash account uh, credit amount here of 11,000 in our treasury stock account so we need a balancing entry here so it's going to go again to additional paid in capital or of our treasury stock but this is the problem we're facing here we can only uh, reduce our additional paid in capital here to a zero balance here. So we've already reduced it here for that last stock issue here at $3,000 here. And we had a, a debit amount here, 3000 versus the credit here initially at 4000 So there's only $1,000 remaining here uh, and we can't go below zero here. So we would debit uh, our additional paid in capital here for $1,000. So what we do here in this case here, the uh, balancing amount has to go to retained earnings here on our balance sheet again. This is where we would debit the remaining amount here of $2,000. So we had to deal with that total $3,000 loss here for those um, 1,000 shares issued at date. Eight dollars per share here, and we could only use uh, go down to a thousand here in additional paid in capital and debit that here. So the remaining debit goes to retained earnings. So again, of two thousand dollars here. So you debit or reduce your retained earnings. Again, that's decreasing our equity account here. So just remember this: a loss. You uh, you debit your additional paid in capital here, and if there's a zero balance, then the you debit the re, uh, retained earnings for the remainder here. So we had a thousand sitting on our additional paid in capital we had to come up with uh, for the three thousand dollar loss the balance here goes to two thousand to our retained earnings now just remember here in all stocks transactions no gain or losses are shown on the income statement everything's transpired right here in our equity accounts in and in the contra equity accounts here for the treasury stock and our additional paid in capital so okay all we wanted to go through here is look at really what this treasury stock is here and how it affects our shareholders equity and we started out with our common stock here uh, in this case we had a credit here that was where we increased their equity here for in this case it was a million dollars but then we rebought the company rebought some 
uh, stock here. And when you do that, you uh, account for it as treasury stock, and that becomes a contra equity account here. So in this case, uh, when you repurchase it here or reacquire it here, this common stock, you would debit your treasury stock for the amount here. In this case, it was based on that $11 cost per share here. So you debit your treasury stock here for that amount here. And that, in the essence, you're decreasing your equity here because you're taking this common stock out of the market here. You're just bringing it back here as treasury stock. And this is what the company is holding here. So that's how they accounted for here. And they have to use this contra equity account here. So just remember, treasury stock is a contra equity account here. Debits amount here reduces the shareholder's equity. Credits increase the shareholder's equity, just as it's showing here. And then when you reissue this uh, treasury stock here, in this case, uh, you're going to have some cash receipts here, and then you have to balance it with, in this case, we use this cost method based on the uh, repurchase price here, the cost of $11 per share here, you come up with some credit amount here, because you, you're, by repurchasing it here, you're increasing your equity again here. You add, you're increasing your equity here because you're reducing the amount of treasury stock. And then uh, simply we have to come up with that balancing amount and that has to go into additional paid in capital here for a treasury stock here. And just remember here when we, uh, in the case here where we uh, credited our balance, we had to credit our additional paid in capital, that's where we saw a gain here. That's a that's the gain here. It doesn't go to any income statement here. All it sits here is additional paid in capital. It's a gain here. That's where you're going to increase your equity here. And then where our balance between our cash account here and our treasury stock account, where we had to have a debit amount balance, that is a recognized as a loss here. And that's where you decrease your equity here as a loss. Okay, so that takes care of uh, this uh, common stock here that's reacquired here as treasury stock and then we reissued this treasury stock here and it is effect that it has here on a shareholders equity. Just remember here treasury stock is not an asset here and it has to be accounted for here as a contra equity here where in essence it's reducing our equity here our common stock because we repurchased them here so uh, whatever uh, when we mean by in this case the amount that's repurchased here was debited to our in this case our treasury stock here and in essence that's reducing the credit amount here that we had in our equity as common stock. All right, so that takes care of our common stock here, reacquired here as treasury stock.